Hello and welcome to another edition of Doctor's Orders. First of all, I'd like to thank the people who came out to clap for us, or as my neighbour would put it, I've come outside to give the NHS the clap. Now, I'm asked, how exactly do I recognise this? Because it's actually very difficult, because there are some people who've got mild symptoms, there are some people who have no symptoms at all. And of course, there are some people who can transmit this virus before symptoms are even developing, which is actually quite a huge threat. And this is known as the incubation period. So for instance, this is a point where you remain asymptomatic um, and or you may have very, very subtle symptoms, but you don't recognize it and therefore you're spreading it. And this is where figures like the R0, which is the number of people it passes on to, can be quite high compared to other viruses. And of course, there are some people who might have what they term as mild symptoms, which they think might be just a bit of a cold or something, and they have to work. Example being NHS staff. In this situation, I think it is important that we have the right testing equipment. And at least we finally have got the understanding from Boris that he recognises that testing is going to be the key to unlocking this. But of course, we're wafely short of our targets. And there are reasons behind that. And I'd like to do a, another video all about testing later on. Until then, the main thing we have to carry on practicing is social distancing. We all know what that means by now. And this is not one of my long lost relatives from India, Sushal Distancing. Now, now let's go back to symptoms because what you can do initially is look on the 111 website. And there you can type in all the different symptoms you've got and it will tell you what they think is the likelihood that you've got coronavirus and what you should then do. Now, initially we were told it should be easy to differentiate from a cold. A cold, you know, you tend to have things like a runny nose, but you're not really going to have fevers and muscle aches. But actually, the, the uh, studies in Germany have shown that even runny nose or mild viral symptoms can be found quite widespread because they were testing quite widely. Secondly, if you've got flu-like symptoms, which is cough, fever, muscle aches, how do you differentiate this from normal flu? Well, the answer is you can't really, not very easily. There's quite also a wide variation in the effects it will have on you. Some elderly can just shrug off this virus. But unfortunately, some children have also died from it. And we keep hearing younger and younger age groups have died. We had a child of 13 die. And I understand we even had a six week old die in America. So the question is, why do some people have no problems? Some people don't. Could this be genetics? Are people more predisposed to reacting in the wrong way to this? We're not really sure at the moment. But it also can be quite confusing, not only for patients, but as well as doctors. If we can't test, then how will we really know? So we initially had an analysis of symptoms which we got from Wuhan. Although, as a caveat, they're not really representative because they mainly were in the moderate severe cases, people who were admitted. And therefore, minor cases would have been under-reported in this situation. So they initially told us that fever was found in about 88% of people, that dry cough was in about 68% of people. And hence, that's why we were told, if you have a fever or dry cough, then you should isolate. We were told it's a dry cough, but actually one in three can actually have sputum. Also, people will say to me, well, what do you mean by cough? I cough all the time anyway, doc. Well, it's been defined as if you cough for more than an hour in the day, or you have three or more prolonged coughing episodes in 24 hours, or it's just if you have your usual cough, but it's just worse. Now, in terms of other symptoms, apart from fever and cough, I hear a lot of people saying to me, I feel extremely tired. I've even heard cases of people being so tired, they can't even get out of bed. You know, they feel so terrible, malaise, really feeling unwell. We see about in one in three people a headache as well. And then in one in seven, there'll be sore throat and muscle ache. So even a sore throat should not be ignored. You should look for other symptoms as well. Now, gastric symptoms, these are important as well. Again, this has come out recently that things like diarrhea, vomiting, abdominal pain, which we might normally just put down to, I've got a bit of a tummy bug, 
actually in one study may even herald the beginning of the coronavirus. It's important that we recognize this. Now, no symptoms are also quite important. Um, anywhere between 4% or a quarter of people can have no symptoms. But very interestingly, anosmia, loss of smell. This can happen in about two thirds of people actually, or agesia, which is loss of taste. And in some people, it may just be the only symptom they have. We had from uh, Gary Lineker's tweet, a demonstration from him as he uh, devoured some vinegar and lemon juice without batting an eyelid, that actually he completely lost his sense of taste and smell. And the important thing though is that now Newcastle University and some researchers in UK say that we should take loss of smell, loss of taste quite seriously. And they've done this because they used a smartphone tracker. Um, it's true, we're all being tracked all the time anyway. So this tracked their symptoms uh, for one and a half million users in, uh, in the UK. And they found that this was definitely a symptom that should be taken seriously. But again, the data might be skewed because it's going to be only people who've got smartphones, which tends to be in the age group 20 to 60, and also more in the urban areas which means rural areas will be under representative. So if you suddenly wake up and can no longer smell the coffee or are not smelling the beauty of flowers or the terrible cooking that your partner might give you, then maybe you need to take this seriously. A few other symptoms just to bear in mind. If you develop chest pain, tightness in the chest, this is unusual and you should really speak to your doctor about this. What about shortness of breath? Well, Surprisingly, this tends to happen a little bit later, normally about day six, day seven, or the second week. This can happen in as low as only 3% of people, but in as much as two thirds of people. And I have heard these stories that people might be feeling better and suddenly they feel really tight in their chest, feel, they feel like they're drowning almost, that's what it feels like. Now it's really important to understand that in the second week, there are some people who can develop what's called a cytokine storm where there's a sudden worsening of the symptoms and the breathing. Now, this is where the system's overreacting to the virus. It's causing a widespread inflammation. And as a result, it's gonna clog up your lungs and cause your organs to fail in some cases. Now, it's really important, and we don't wanna scare people, but people need to be able to recognize this because this could be the key to your survival. Because if you don't recognize it, to say, I need to tell my doctor about it, and if the doctors aren't recognizing it and how to exactly check for it, then this could be the key. And I think it's important to mention this. Do also remember another thing, the higher the viral load. So the more exposure you've had to the virus, the more chance you're gonna have severe symptoms. And that's why we're seeing a lot of doctors and nurses in the front line. And again, I mentioned at the start, that's why people are clapping for us. We're putting ourselves in the front line, perhaps without the right protective equipment. So please government work on that for us. But, and we're hearing the, the names of these people, and so far what I'm mainly seeing are names of Arabic, Asian, Afro-Caribbean, um, you know, descendants. Now, is that because, you know, these are the people who are more in the front line, or is there a genetic predisposition that these people are more likely to get inflammation? Again, we don't know. So just to sum up today, what are the doctor's orders for today? I'd like you to learn how to recognize the symptoms of COVID-19. I'd like you to be aware of the wide variety of symptoms. Remember that some people may have no symptoms at all. I remember to practice social distancing and remember to keep pushing for more testing and protective equipment. And hopefully we can all work on that. So thanks for listening to me. I'm gonna make some more posts later about moderate severe symptoms and treatment. So please look out, please subscribe. Please share, please comment.